516 reads, an important indicator of lung function, function is FEV, which is the volume of air that a person can expire in one second. Dr. Jones plans to measure FEV in a random sample of N young women with a certain, uh, from a certain population and use the sample mean Y bar as an estimate of the population mean. Let E be the event that, the jo that Jones' sample mean is plus or minus within plus or minus 100 milliliters of the population mean. Assume the population distribution is normal, so the population distribution, let me just write, pop, population follows a normal distribution with mean 3,000 milliliters and standard deviation 400 milliliters, okay? And again, event E is Y bar is within plus or minus 100. So basically, Y bar, event E is, um, that Y bar is between 2,900 and 3,100. Okay, this is event E, okay? Is that, and so now we wanna know what is the probability of event E if N equals 15, and then later on we wanna know what's the probability that of event E if n equals 60, okay? So with n equals 15, um, y bar, okay, our, our y bars will have a sampling distribution, okay? And that's going to have the same mean as before, 3,000, so this is our mean, and our standard deviation is going to be 400, divided by the square root of 15. All right, so we're not looking at individuals, but we're looking at samples of size 15. We don't care about each individual in the sample, we're just combining them all into uh, one number, and that's the sample mean. And those sample means, if we do this over and over, we'll have a sampling distribution, and that sampling distribution will have mean 3,000, and uh, standard deviation 400 by, divided by square root of 15, uh, if you do 400 divided by square root of 15, square root of 15 is just a little bit less than uh, 4, and so you end up getting same thing, 3,000, and this ends up being 103.3. Okay, and so now we want to know what's the probability that it's going to be between 3,100 and 2,900. So uh, this is. Our, uh, this is the sampling distribution. And so we're going up, we're, we're centered at 3,000, we're going up to 3,100, we're going down to 2,900. Okay, and our, oops, I don't know, my, my bars are off. And we're looking for this area. Okay, and so here, uh, 3,100 is almost, is just a tiny bit less than one standard deviation above, and 2,900 is just a little bit um, more than one standard deviation below. So it's going to be close to 68%, okay, but it's not going to be quite uh, exactly that. So we've got um, Z is equal to 3,100 minus 3,000 divided by our standard deviation, 103.3. And so we get 100 divided by 103.3, and that gives us 0.97. All right, and then doing the opposite, except now 2,900 minus 3,000. And just because of symmetry, I can already tell you that it's going to be negative 0.97, but you can do the math yourself and see that. We'll get negative 0.97. All right, and so the area to the left of 0.97, area left of 0.97, that is equal uh, to 0.834. Let me, see, let me just write these down to now. Just want to double check. 0.834. Nine seven yeah point eight three four zero and then the area to the left of negative uh, point nine seven uh, point 
0.1660. Okay, and so the difference, so remember we're taking the area to the left of here, which is 0.834, and then we're subtracting off the area to the left over here to get what's in, left in between. So if we take the difference, uh, we are left with 0.6680. Okay, so close to 68%, about 67% uh, within, uh, are between um, 2,900 and 3,100. These are the sample means. So this is not an individual person, uh, but this is the sample means. Uh, uh, 15 people. Um, okay, and then so part B asks a uh, very similar thing except now we're increasing our sample size to 60 and so that means that we're going to have a normal distribution with mean 3000 and standard deviation is going to be 400 divided by the square root of 60. So when we increase the sample size our standard deviation decreases. That's the standard deviation of the sam uh, sam sampling distribution. Okay, So the means of our sampling distribution changes. Um, so it's going to create a more narrow distribution. We got 3,000. And if you do 400 divided by the square root of 60, uh, you end up getting 51.64. Okay, you know, we might round differently. Um, the main concept is I want to know if you can do 400 divided by the square root of 60 and know that it needs to be square root of 60 here. Okay, so here uh, we've got uh, centered at 3,000 again, except now we've got a much more narrow distribution. Alright, and we're still going down to 2,900 and 30 up to 3,100. Okay, and we want to know what's the probability in here. Okay. And so here, look just eyeballing it, 3100, 100 above and 100 below is almost two standard deviations. Okay, not quite, so it's going to be close to 95%, but it, it'll be a little bit less than that. So here we've got z is equal to 3100 minus 3000 divided by 51.64 and then on the other side we've got 2900 minus 3000 divided by 51.64 we've got 100 over 51.64 negative 100 over 51.64 100 divided by 51.64 is positive 1.94 and over here we've got negative 1.94 okay and so the area to the left of positive 1.94 is 0.99738 and the area to the left of negative 1.94 is 0 0.0262 okay all right so I always draw arrows because um, you might be tempted to write equals, but it's always arrows because 1.94 does not equal 0.973. It's the area to the left of 1.94 is that. Okay, and so the difference there is 0.9738 minus 0 0.0262, and we get 0.9476. Okay, all right, so not quite 95%, but very close to it, all right? And I was just eyeballing because uh, going up and down 100 is just ever so slightly more than two standard deviations. If our standard deviation is 51, going up 100 is almost two standard deviations up or below. Okay. And then so part C, I'm not going to write it down, but it says how does the probability of E depend on sample size? That is, as N increase, does probability of E increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, and the answer is, as n increases, the probability of event e increases, all right? And that's because when we make our sample size larger, our sampling distribution gets more and more narrow, 
and uh, or more and more skinny, it gets closer and closer to the mean. Everything gets squished closer to the mean. And so the probability that it's going to be within 100 units of the mean uh, increases.